A lot of people love watches, want to get into watch collecting, love to hear the stories. So, you know, it, it's really good of you to put that information out there. Knowing what you know, you've been in the game long enough, you've experienced, you've been in the factories, you know, we're, we're really in uncharted times right now. Like this is like the real estate yeah. market, stock market. People are saying, when's a crash coming? What's happening? Yeah, you know, yeah. this doesn't make any sense. So tell me, my friend, when you look at where we are today, where we're going today, the two things that come to mind, let's start off. Number one, prices. Now I know mm -hmm. that a lot of the brands, they still are stable. You can still get your deals out there. It's only select ones. Like the media puts it out yeah. there. But there's a lot of great pieces you can pick up there and great deals if you don't have to have the must get Rolex, right? Yeah, yeah. Or the must get Patek, for example. But on those pieces that everybody has driven in their mind that they have to receive, where do you see prices going? Is it going to soften? Down. Is it going to go up? Yeah, I, I, I can't see this sustained because whenever the price is that far detached from intrinsic value, Mm -hmm. Some something's got to give, and you know I, I just keep thinking Beanie Babies all over again, and and everyone even then we're saying oh it's different this time. The only and and they're saying that now. The only the only thing that might keep us going a bit longer is the the way we get our information now is is very interesting because before Beanie Babies you were limited in the news feed from six channels or the newspaper or Beanie Baby magazine or whatever it was. So you weren't completely inundated. Now with, with social media and you, your feed, you get fed what you're gonna see and it tailors it so that there's not another headline that can bump Beanie Babies from the front page because yeah. all you'll get is the watches. And so even though all this other thing, things are going on in the world, there's the front page is always going to be fed to you based on what you've you've um, tailored it so the one thing that might keep this going on longer uh, although uh, hopefully it changes as people get out into the real world because for two years we were stuck dependent on that that virtual world so right. it um it, it's going to keep going as long as no one looks outside of their 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 silo and so it might keep going because people's only reality is is what they they think is out there and in their mind the reality is that everybody is sporting a, a daytona and everyone is is driving a lamborghini and because everyone they see is doing that on social media feed or youtube or all these things so they get this very skewed sense of reality and so until they go out into the real world which hopefully we'll more and more see they'll get a sense of fantasy versus reality and and see that these hype watches aren't really the end point of the universe. So well, I think, yeah, you think it could go that route. And I, and I have a couple of factors maybe I could throw in for you to think mm -hmm. about if it's gonna, and if you think this is gonna affect it, like number one, during the last two years or so, when people are making, we're still making incomes, the ones that we're making still income, some people made very good incomes, you know, off of what had happened. And because yeah. obviously a lot of people lost their businesses, lost their jobs, but there were the segment of the population that did very well for whatever reason, but they also were not traveling. They were not eating out of restaurants. They yeah. couldn't go to the malls. They weren't buying it as much as they were. Not all of them were shopping online. So what are we going to do? We're going to feed the watches, feed the cars, for example. All of a sudden yeah. now we're traveling again and we're going to restaurants again and we're going to the mall again. Yeah. Is that money maybe going to take away where all of a sudden, you know what, I'm not going to buy my sixth Rolex or maybe not going to buy a Rolex at all. Do you think that yeah. could affect it at all? Well, I think, yeah, that'll definitely affect it because, because you're right. The vacation fund became the watch fund. And then there was a supply and demand issue because supply was legitimately slow during COVID and factory shutdowns. Yes. And I think that that'll, that'll factor in. I think the speculators will start to step out the same thing will happen in the real estate market as well. And there's a lot of buyers in the watch market that are purely speculators that are looking for the quick flip. And some of those guys took out lines of credit or sure. credit card and took advantage of low interest rates. And so now that the cost of, of carrying stock or holding stock is going to go up, some of these guys are going to have to sell off and they'll be happy with a thousand dollar profit instead of the, the five thousand dollar profit. So I think a lot of those guys who are on the wait lists will take themselves off or no longer want to, to be on it. And, and I think it'll be a, a quick decline. The minute you'll start to see a, a fault in, in the line, things will, will start to rapidly turn into a bit of a floodgate. And unless the ones holding stock have enough power to keep those, those sell-offs under control. 
either by buying them off or not letting them hit the uh, the mainstream or the consciousness. Because when you look at with Beanie Babies, all it took was was one eBay listing to to start to crumble the whole house of cards. So if stuff like that starts to happen. I think that it will, it will cause a big sell off. So I think a lot of those stocks, um, the watch stock, are, are not on the wrists of the end consumer. Absolutely not. I mean, it's a gray market is ruling it, obviously. Oh, yeah. And as far as all the games that people are saying you have to go buy X number of product from the jeweler, of non-desirable product, for the, they have one of the desirable items, yeah. and how they're flipping it themselves. There's a whole lot of speculation there. Where I see RJ when I go to number two is the supply chain. And I'll give you the example of GM, for example, where I read one of the interviews with, with one of the high up executives. And they said, look, the days of, a, of you seeing a huge lot full of inventory and the mass sell-offs is over. We're not going to be carrying that kind of inventory anymore. We got smart. We're going to make more make, made to order. You're going to have to order online. You're going to have to wait for your product. And it's just in time inventory. That's where it's headed. Mm -hmm. And without staying with a whole bunch of inventory, then guess what? The prices can stabilize. Like I think again to the Simpsons, when Homer wanted to buy yeah. a product and called it online and said, Hey, do you have any more of these left? They see a whole <laughs> warehouse full of them. Yeah, I got one more, buddy. You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and even Rolex, the way I see it, you know, if I think they're smart enough now to realize we're never going to see showcases full anymore. They're going to mm -hmm. hold it in the back, maybe put a few pieces. Say, yeah, I, maybe I can get you. Call them back in a week. Yeah, yeah. And they'll they'll be it's a game. Like honestly, yeah. perception is reality. And I think that eventually the supply will catch up to the demand. But I don't know if they're ever going to start flooding again, quote unquote flooding and, and seeing like when you when you talk about Omega, when they say, oh, son, yeah. here's five variations and here's as many as you want. I think yeah. Rolex is too smart for that. And they're yeah. not going to let that, that happen. Well, well, that's part of, you know, the whole Veblen theory. And, and to be a Veblen item, it, it, just, it would have to be something difficult to obtain. Yes. And for the longest time, the, the price alone was was the barrier to entry and the price became what what made it difficult to to obtain yes. and it's like you said all of a sudden especially in the last couple of years uh money was cheap you could borrow it and the price became less and less of a barrier and there was a lot of overnight millionaires and bitcoin millionaires and house flippers or people taking massive equity out of their house because the house they bought for a hundred thousand is now worth eight hundred thousand so they remortgage and put you know, 500k in their in their bank account. So all of a sudden, money was no longer what made it difficult because then everybody had money. So something else had to create a new barrier to to make that desirable. And so the difficulty in obtaining it became its its Veblen signature. And and why it, it maintained Veblen status was that it was difficult to obtain, not necessarily expensive, because people get much more excited about a steel. Uh, steel Pepsi than they did about precious metal Daytonas at the time. And so I think that that strategy of having to earn the right or the fact that not everybody can get it, and that's something Hermes has been doing for, for decades and it's worked brilliantly for them. And they're, still, and they're still weightless. They're still not getting those yeah. bags. Oh, yeah. No matter and how many billions are worth. To, to produce and, and yeah. make and, and, and worth much less than... Um, then it's it's MSRP and it's it's black market value or gray market value. And so and I, I think that they, they know how to play the Veblen game because yes. what what makes it desirable is is the difficulty to obtain. And yes. if it's if it's just a matter of handing over some cash, that doesn't make it difficult. Because let's let's speak frankly. If Rolex went and across the board multiplied their prices by 50% to 100 percent they're selling mm -hmm. out the exact same way. So, yeah. you know, you have a day date that back in the day was, oh, wow, that's 40,000. That's a lot of money. Well, hold on. Here's this protect that's 80, 90,000. Wow, that day date's actually looking pretty good right yeah, now, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. And people are kind of waking up saying, wow, Rolex is actually really cheap. Like, oh my God, yeah. retailer, thank you for taking my full money plus tax. Thank you for the <laughs> privilege of yeah. buying your product. The It's been unheard of for so many years. And that's where I yeah. don't see it changing, but you're right. You know, and if you think about Hermes, it's not much different that way. So people are well, waiting. Part, yeah. yeah. Oh, the other, like, like you say, you go to Miami, all you see is Rolexes. When all we were in Europe, it, it was a lot of the same thing. Mm -hmm. And so when you get out into the real world and everyone has one, yeah. just, there's less, uh, less of that Veblen special feeling of, about it. And so I think that the more saturated the market gets, because remember, they still make a million watches a year and they have for decades. So the minute people start to get away from, social media feeds and into the real world, I think that 
the, the perception will start to shift a little bit. I think that there's still so much demand. I mean, Rolex has done an amazing job of infiltrating the consciousness of every consumer in the world and, and making it so that there's no other way to celebrate an achievement than, than by getting a Rolex. And I went through that same road, uh, I call it the requisite Rolex road of any collector. Oh, yeah. As, um, and, and then you leave the Rolex and then you come back to it because you appreciate it on a different level because it's less about the achievement status and, um, and symbolism. And then you come back to just appreciating how brilliant they are <laughs> in the watch world. And, and really, the movements are incredibly solid and bulletproof and robust. And, and something like the Sky Dweller doesn't get nearly enough credit for being a dual time annual calendar. And that's a brilliant movement. But all anyone cares about is, is the logo on the dial. Half the owners uh, yeah. don't, don't even realize that the bezel moves. <laughs> yeah. like, let's be honest. Thank you for enjoying today's episode of the Chosen Life podcast. Go ahead and hit the subscription button below and the notification bell to catch all of our great shows. And remember to contact the chosen lawyers when you are ready for your next real estate and commercial transaction, go to cormans.ca.